I'm going to be bringing you to my kitchen to give it a decor refresh but I'm also going to be giving you my best tips on how to style your kitchen designer like regardless of the color of the cabinets or countertops or backsplash that you may have so if you enjoyed this video I really hope you can consider hitting that red subscribe button down below and without any further ado let's just go ahead and jump right in when it comes to trying to refresh your kitchen and present it like a designer or magazine kitchen, the first thing that comes to my mind is to have declutter countertops. That is especially true if you want to add some decorations to your countertops because they won't be able to be noticed if all of your countertops are cluttered. However, the kitchen is of course a place where we go and cook and carry on with normal life. So it's not really realistic to not keep a single kitchen appliance on your countertops. That is why I personally like to prioritize between two to three kitchen appliances that are essential for me to have out on my countertops. In my case, I like having the Keurig, I like having the toaster oven and also the kitchen knives. We used to have an ice maker for a long, long time and it was blue. My husband ordered it like that from Amazon. And if you remember my previous Decorate With Me videos, we would keep it there because we wanted the ice. Finally, I was able to move it somewhere else because we did get a new refrigerator that now makes ice, so I don't need to keep that there. But just keep in mind the necessities that your family may have and then decide from there what are those appliances that you want to keep in your countertops always keeping it realistic but when it comes to kitchen decor I also think less is more so try to have those countertops visible not only is more aesthetically pleasing but also they will be easier to clean because you don't have to clean around things you just can clean the entire countertop usually designer kitchens we'll have a butler's pantry in the back where people keep all of their appliances but my kitchen is not that way we do have a small coffee slash bar area in the back but it's not enough for all the appliances that we want to keep out on the countertop so i don't really use it for that purpose and that is why i do think that you still need to have your appliances out just try to prioritize on which ones are those for you the next thing that I like taking into consideration when it comes to refreshing or decorating your kitchen is to try to do decorations against your backsplash rather than on top of your countertops. And for this, I like to rely a lot on cutting boards, particularly wood and marble cutting boards can bring a special cozy effect to your kitchen. If your kitchen has a lot of stone, then the wood will definitely bring out that cozy homey effect but if your kitchen has a lot of silver a lot of white and you kind of want to break that up the wood in the unfinished cutting boards will also be great to do that if on the other hand you have a kitchen that has darker cabinets and you have a darker granite color then marble cutting boards are also a way to go i still like combining both of those against my countertop and this is particularly a look that i repeat and repeat and repeat for proof of that this is a picture of my old home where i would still decorate with the same cutting boards against my backsplash but another great thing to do on your backsplash is just adding pieces of art and you can either put these against the backsplash just like that or use some command strips if you do remove those correctly, you won't damage your backsplash at all and still be very aesthetically pleasing to the eye, but you won't be occupying a lot of space on your countertop. The next thing I like recommending when decorating your kitchen is to create what I like calling a command center. This is something that I recently started doing last year and ever since I did it, I found it so practical and so pretty that I continue to do it through all the seasons or any time that I do my kitchen refresh. 
and that consists of basically creating a little spot right next to your stovetop where you're going to store all of your maybe wooden spoons maybe salt and pepper or stuff that you will reach for when cooking so in my case I like having olive oil on hand, which is what I mainly use for cooking. I like having salt, pepper, and garlic on hand. So what I'll do is that I'll enclose that in a beautiful tray and maybe add a little detail to decorate it a little bit. A good tip when it comes to doing this with your things or maybe spoons that you already have is that I like using only wooden spoons. The plastic spoons will go into a drawer. I think it looks more beautiful if it's only wooden spoons. And for this, you can also use a variety of trays. My latest decoration that you're seeing right here, I'm actually using this elevated tray that I got from Hobby Lobby. It looks to be very unfinished wood and I love it. I pair it in the back with this gorgeous round tray, which I show you on my haul last week from Hobby Lobby. And then I am breaking all that brown with a little bit of greenery. And this plant actually came from Target and it's a $5 eucalyptus plant. I like buying a variety of this and keeping them on hand for little details like this around the house. So when I'm cooking, I have all of these elements to my easy reach. And I also think it looks so, so beautiful. But you can do this with many other things. I've seen that some people choose to put their salt and pepper in wooden shakers. I don't even do that. I just use the ones that I buy from Sam's Club. I don't think they look ugly. But you do you with the things that you have. And maybe salt and pepper are not the first spices you grab for when cooking. But do you when it comes to creating that space. I do think, however, that using a very large tray can clutter your space because ultimately you're going to start adding more spices than what you need. This has happened to me as well in the past. So just keep that in mind. Use a tray that will be enough to store the essentials in there. It'll look magazine-like and very aesthetically pleasing. And for these type of elements, I, again, like going to Hobby Lobby. I feel like those elevated trays are an amazing deal and Hobby Lobby Hope also has an amazing variety on these at the moment. I created several videos on those, which I'm going to make sure to link down below. And for the cutting boards, again, Hobby Lobby, Target, Marshalls have great deals on this. It's just a matter of also working with the things that you already have, which has been the case for me in the past when giving my kitchen a decor refresh. The next thing that is very important when decorating your kitchen is picking up a focal or central space. So in my case, that is going to be the actual center of my kitchen island, which is the first thing that it's visible from my kitchen when you enter the house or when you come from the back door from the garage. And what I like to do is measure my decoration or align it perfectly with the two light fixtures that I have in that area. So what I'm doing here is that I'm going to create a statement with the decoration that I'm going to use. I'm going to use this beautiful wooden vase that I got from Hobby Lobby. It was only $5 with that 50% discount for all of the spring shop decor. And then I'm going to pair it with this gorgeous statement vase from the Magnolia Collection at Target. This is also another thing that I show you on my Target haul from last week. I love the beautiful details of this vase. It looks like a clay vase, but at the same time, it looks also very modern. It has that off-white ivory color with beautiful silver and beige specks. And I'm going to pair this with a lot of greenery. So ideally, you want to do or create a lot of height with your greenery, especially if you're doing a statement decoration in the center of your kitchen. I am going to use these floral or stems greeneries that I bought from Hobby Lobby last week. I did buy these at 50% off, which is the best time to go buy those because they can get very expensive. And I particularly love that the eucalyptus has a very natural color. And then I'm also going to go ahead and pair that with olive stems. I am obsessed with olive stems ever since forever. And right now those olive trees are so trendy and I cannot wait to get my hands on one of them when I do find one that I think it's a nice price because right now those are super expensive. 
But anyways, I really love how this statement decoration turned out to be. Love that it's modern but rustic at the same time. And I think the color combination looks so good even though my kitchen has a lot of silver, a lot of gray, a lot of white. I feel like it did a great job bringing a homey and cozy vibe to the kitchen and I just, I'm in love with it. Another thing that is often overlooked in kitchen decor is the floors. And while I do think that those thick and cushiony mats can be very comfortable if you're a chef and you spend hours in the kitchen cooking food or baking maybe, if you're not one of those people, I think we can sacrifice that comfort a little bit to have some beautiful rugs that will bring everything together in the kitchen and that will warm up the look of our kitchen. I found these gorgeous rug at Sam's Club and it was only $16. I love that it's a washable rug and they have many beautiful options. I actually love every single one of them, but I decided to go for this gray one because the floors in my kitchen are really light. So I felt like it was a good compliment to have something darker in there. This definitely brought the entire look together and gave my kitchen that cozy and homey vibe that I was looking for even more. I love this rug so much that I actually went back to Sam's and got another one to place right in the center in between my kitchen island and my cabinets. And another important thing about this rug is that even though it's machine washable, it's also super easy to clean. I remember I got this before, right before the 4th of July and I was making my, my traditional 4th of July cake and that calls for a lot of food coloring and I remember I dropped a little bit of food coloring on the carpet and just by spraying it with 409 it all went away. So I was pretty happy about that. I think if you are going to buy a rug for the kitchen, make sure that it's machine washable and make sure that it will adjust to your needs as a cook that you are maybe, or a, as a mother of a family or as a housekeeper. And that is going to be everything for today's video. Overall, I was really happy how my kitchen turned out. I feel like I'm gonna keep it like this for a long time and maybe just switch things slightly for maybe the fall or maybe Christmas. But overall, I really hope you have found this video useful and that you have enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section down below if you're inspired to do anything in your own kitchen. Again, thank you so, so much for watching and I really hope I can see you in my next video. Bye.